in life, you will meet different types of people. You will encounter people who seem to have everything. Maybe they have really good parents who taught them mathematics when they were 10. They sat there every night at the kitchen table showing them calculus. Maybe they live in really good neighborhoods. They're rich, they have good friends, a good social network. Their parents have friends. So when they graduate from college, they will have good opportunities. And this is all very, very good. And if you're one of these people, that's awesome. If you're not one of these people, if you feel like you have less opportunities, then this video is for you. Now, you can always find someone who has more opportunity than you. And I don't think it's healthy or even good to look at someone who has more opportunities than you and feel bad about it. That's, that's not good. No, no, no. When you look at people who have more opportunities than you, I think you should be happy for them, right? Like, it's a good thing. And you should want to create those opportunities for yourself. You know, if you look at successful people in the world, in all fields, in all areas, and success is very individual, the definition of success is different to different people because people are different. They have different goals, different dreams, different desires. But when you look at people who are successful, you will find that most of them do come from really good backgrounds. And that makes sense, right? I mean, if you have a person here and a person here, and this person here has tons of advantages and you know everything going for them, and this person doesn't, obviously this person has a better chance of succeeding. But there is a commonality that all of these successful people have, and that is the ability to work incredibly hard. Now sure, some people get lucky, but you, you, you kind of have to throw those, those data points out of the, out of the sample. You don't, you don't use those. <laughs> you don't want to consider luck. In this video, we're going to talk about how if you start from nothing, if you feel like you have less, or if you just don't have a lot of opportunities, how can you use that to grow and become better at whatever it is you're trying to do. Maybe you're trying to learn math. Maybe you want to get in shape. Maybe you want to get a degree. Maybe you uh, want to get a job. Whatever it is. But I just want to reiterate first that, again, when you look at successful people, you, you, you want to use that as inspiration, right? You want to say, wow, you know, that's pretty cool. So one of the things I've found when, when you start from nothing is that it really builds a, a strong work ethic because you have nothing and so you have to work a little bit harder. As an example, let's say you're really bad at math and just because you just never did a lot of math when you were young, so you just have to work harder than someone else who has more opportunities. And this is true for most things. And through hard work, that builds resilience. It does, it really does. And I think that once you learn to work really, really hard on something you really want, once you acquire that skill, you don't lose it. You might lose your motivation, right? But once you learn how to really work, how to really push yourself, how to really focus and just crush it. That's a skill. That is learned. I do think some people have it naturally or they're more inclined to develop that skill than other people, right? Genetics play a role, I think, in everything, even in mathematics and intelligence, but to a point, right, to a point. 
The mind is powerful, right? You can train your mind, you can learn to think differently. And so when you start from nothing, you're forced to work harder, you're forced to be resourceful because you don't have all the things that many other people have, right? Uh, just as an example, if, if, let's say you don't have a lot of money, right? So do you go buy new furniture? Probably not, right? So you learn to be resourceful. You go to estate sales, you go to thrift shops, you buy a couch for $100 instead of $1,000. Little things like that. So you have those strengths that you develop when you start from nothing. But the reality is, it always is better to have more, right? To start with more. So use your strengths. Use your, your starting point as strength. And learn to work hard, right? Again, when you, if there's something you want in life, and you look at other people who have those things, and you say, wow, they're really smart. I wish I was as smart as they were, you know? Then you just have to put in the work. And sometimes you have to work harder than other people. I mean, some people are just naturally better at certain things. And so you just have to work harder than them to catch up. And I think you have to accept that. But you also have to believe that you can catch up to these people. And you can. You can. You can rise above and catch up to people who are better than you in whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. You can do it. You can do it. I had a friend who, he was very good at mathematics and he was much better than me. His background was much better. Both of his parents, I believe, were professors. I know his dad was a professor. His brother had a PhD in mathematics from a great school, worked at a great school. And so he had a better background than I did. Right, much better, totally different life, right? Totally different. Just like the example I gave you at the beginning, right? Like, big contrast. But when I first met him, I was impressed. I was like, wow, this guy's a genius. And then I knew more about him. I was like, okay, wow. And I started to think like, okay, yeah, he has a, a better background than me. That's probably why he's so good. And I was able to catch up. Did he have more raw, natural talent than I did? Maybe. Maybe. He was pretty smart. Maybe he did. Right? Smart guy. Smart guy. Freaky smart. Scary smart. But I use that as inspiration, right? His brilliance gave me motivation. I wanted to just, even if I can just be remotely close to his level, I'd be thrilled. The guy was awesome, right? Great guy. So that's what you should do when you encounter people who are more successful than you or have abilities or things that you want. You should try to rise above to their level. You know, that's one of the good things about, and I don't want to go on too much of a tangent, but that's one of the good things about surrounding yourself with people who are more successful. And when I say more successful, I don't just mean money, okay? I mean intelligence too. This is a really good argument, for example, for trying to go to a good school. And I know that many people, when they graduate high school, it's really hard to get into a good school, okay? But the reality is it's not, I mean, do your best, but if you don't get into a good school, it's okay, you can always go to graduate school. And I think it's easier to get into a better school for graduate school than it is as an undergrad. Because you have more time to, you know, develop and really hone your study skills and bring up your grades, you know. In high school, you just have a few years and the competition is fierce. It's really hard to get into MIT as a high school student. Right? Very, very hard. Very hard. Now, it's also hard to get in as a grad student too, so that's MIT. The point is, if you start from nothing, you're forced to grind. You're forced to grind a little bit harder you're forced to think differently. You're forced to be resourceful. It builds resilience. You have to be a little more creative. Um, it makes you tough. You look at life through a different lens, okay? That, that's a big one. People who have luxurious lifestyles or, again, they just come from better backgrounds or whatever, 
their points of view are different from your points of view. I mean, everyone's life is different, so everyone has some different perspective, you know? People live in different countries, so that's, you know, culture shocks, right? I mean, you, you might live in the US, you might not, so your life could be very, very different from mine and very different from another viewer's. But the commonality that all successful people have is that, is that hard work. And when you start from nothing, I think you, you learn that early on, assuming you choose to work, right? Some people start from nothing and, and, and they give up because they look at others who have more and they say, oh, that's impossible, I can't do that. This person, you know, they were born rich or, or you know, there's no way I could do that. I don't, have those, I don't have those opportunities, so I can't do it. That's fine, you can do that, but then you're never gonna reach your goals, right? And I think that's kind of sad. I think you should always try. And I know that a lot of people don't believe that. A lot of people think that their situation is so bad that there's no way they can get out of it and this is the best they can do. And that's okay. It's okay to think that way. But I think your life will be better if you think a bit bigger and you aim for bigger goals, even if they're unrealistic by what society says. You know, a good, a good way to find out what society says is go on the internet and talk to ChatGPT and ask it like a generic question. It'll give you, it'll give you a generic answer based on like the generic societal answer that you get from Google or just the common line of thinking in the world today, right? Which I'm not saying it's wrong, right? Usually things are the norm because they're pretty good, but there's always some wacky things out there if you really start thinking about how, how things work. Starting it as a disadvantage can be a strength, okay? It can be a very good strength. If you started from nothing, leave a comment in the comment section below. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.